Matilda Hernandez Mieres. Um, I'm Bodie Harnish. Hey, how's everybody doing? Feeling good? <laughs> right. Us too. Um, so we're going to talk today a little bit about um, a grant we received. Um, and so, but to introduce, we're the Forest Reciprocity Group um, over here, and uh, uh, which is a parent of or <clears throat> Cloud Forest Institute. It's a project of that. Um, and Cloud Forest Institute's been around for almost 20 years. We do fiscal sponsorship uh, of people trying to get to a nonprofit status. So, um, so I've been with Frog for like three years. Mm -hmm. We've both been um, just really inspired by the, the broad range of things going on in our community surrounding, you know, fire resiliency. Um. Um, I like many people, the, the work got very shifted during the pandemic, um, but last year we started doing, um, we called them hop arounds and we kind of once a month we'd go to somebody's house and either help them with a project in the woods or build a round pole barn, other kinds of things. And that kind of community engagement really fed our souls in a way that um, we were trying to figure out how to do more to. Um, and then recently we got this opportunity um, from a develop relationship we've been developing with um, RIFI, the Redwood Forest Foundation. Um, and they passed us this grant application that we're very excited to announce that we got in partnership um, so we're now one of four new pilot projects funded under the Office of Planning and Research to work on forest biomass residual solutions as part of the broader North Coast Resiliency Plan. Um, and so that work grant is um, directly in partnership with the Watershed Center, um, which we're really excited to be working with and learning from. Um, and the specific scope of the grant is to assess the feasibility of creating a multi-stakeholder cooperative to aggregate the materials coming out of the forest. And so this was a problem that was really highlighted by some of the experiences the Watershed Center had had, that there, there are many ideas about what we can do with these forest health thinnings, but if we don't have a clear way to get those materials out of the woods and to businesses, and a way to connect landowners and make sure that businesses, especially if they have to apply for bank loans, can show that they can have a long um, supply of these materials. For us, it's good to know that there's more poles out there than we could ever possibly use, but for bigger agencies like banks, that doesn't necessarily fly. Um, but we also really see this as part of two steps, that there's, there's this aggregation component and then there's fostering these businesses that can use those poles. And so we're also hoping with these partnerships, we'll be able to connect to more grant funding to be able to really encourage those businesses in our communities. Um. So uh, we couldn't have done this without a lot of support from people in this room. Um, we got letters of, of commitment to, to, to help us build this cooperative together and also letters of support from many people in this room and we just want to be um, super grateful for the opportunity to, you know, um, build better systems together. Um, so to get a little more into the specifics of the grant, um, it's, it's really to um, provide funds to assess the feasibility of creating um, a multi-stakeholder cooperative. Um, now that may be a new term to many people here, um, but so cooperatives you may be familiar with. Um, for example, uh, you know the Ukiah Co-op is a consumer co-op um, model. There's also you know um, bakeries like Alvarado Street in Berkeley, workers cooperative, um, other places like uh, Organic Valley, which is a producers cooperative. So many small farms. Um, the idea of a multi-stakeholder cooperative um, is that it's going to be um, balancing the needs of multiple uh, businesses and community members and landowners so to to so instead of having an organization that has has one main interest group driving the force you're balancing the interests of multiples so in this idea perhaps it will be the landowners the people who are doing the forest health work, the businesses that are utilizing it, and maybe even community members themselves. And you create a, a, a container for all of that so that you can balance and, and really make a, um, not just balance, but learn from all of these different interests and get as many people at the table to share their expertise and perspective. Mm -hmm. um. So we, yeah, we believe that um, by keeping stakeholder capital um, investment lower, the cooperative can remain um, nimble 
and best match the scale of, of supply and demand in our region. Um, the business plan that we'll be drafting over the next year will encompass a variety of forest practices and products um, combining frogs and Riffy's common goals to thin small diameter uh, trees out of overburdened forests, um, to reduce the risk of catastrophic fire, stabilize watersheds, promote diverse habitats, and activate long-term carbon sequestration. Um, while providing uh, long-term economic and social benefits to the communities around them. Um, we're really trying to do this on a replicatable versus a scalable six thing. Um, how, how do we have models that work in our small areas instead of trying to make large centralized locations where we have to bring materials from all across the county? If we can have multiple of these places um, nearby or even more of the materials actually processed in the woods so those um, thinnings and shavings and all those things can be returned back to the forest. So we're really minimizing how much we're taking out but maximizing the economic benefit of it. Um, mm -hmm. And so some of the, the main questions we're really trying to answer is one, what are the legal mechanisms that already exist for how to get these materials, especially out of forest health um, projects? There's a lot of complications if you don't have a timber harvest plan, which is very expensive, especially if you're just trying to work with small poles. Um, there's whether we can have this mobile processing unit that can move around to different areas um, in conjunction with the forest health work being done or with the Mendocino Fire Safe Council um, and really just keep our, our footprint low. Um, and then how can we promote, incubate, and contract with the businesses that are going to use these materials? Um, and of course, working closely with um, landowners and um, you know other other forest restoration projects, um, and and just trying to to sort of um, do better do better work and, and make more use of these materials and um, just sort of uh, support each other you know in this big project. Um, maybe we'll give you an example of. Uh, so, multi-stakeholder cooperative. Um, there's an example we found very inspiring. We found out of Sacre Coeur, Quebec. Um, and this is Bois Psycho, um, which is a logging operation that it was a, so it was a town, like many of these towns, that was based around a mill. And this is in northern Quebec. Um, and by 1984, the mill was in its third bankruptcy and third owner in 10 years. Um, but in this case, the community managed to figure out how to buy the mill. And so they turned it into a multi-stakeholder cooperative that had equal ownership between the mill workers, the loggers, and um, a consortium of local businesses who decided to invest because they realized that the fate of the town was dependent on this mill. Um, so now the co-op um, expanded. It was able to use some of its profits to create sub, um, subsidiaries that worked with the materials. So now they have a plywood operation and they have other of these kinds of materials. I think they have six subsidiaries in total. They have 600 employees in a town of 2,100 people. And in their history, they have had no layoff of workers. Um, and so not only did this co-op reverse the decline and secure the future of this existing enterprise, it actually helped to create new business opportunities and markets that had not been envisioned before. They were also able, through the multi-stakeholder model, to give outside supporters a formal way to contribute to the success of the enterprise and thus the economic health and vitality of their communities. This model also provided a means to bring together the best thinking from a wide range of interested parties, um, which we find really inspiring and something we really hope to draw from. Um, yeah, we want to emphasize that this process we're embarking on, um, we really desire to do it in, in, uh, in a participatory design way. So really trying to bring in people from the uh, various organizations represented here and, and um, to uh, work through a process of, of assessing each other's needs and, and trying to, to match um, you know, our desire to uh, build this cooperative you know, with those needs. And so, you know, um, it's and a... To really have as many stakeholders present from the beginning. So, because a, a co-op is not something that one person designs, right? It's designed by the community for the community. It's the only way it's going to work. Um, and so we definitely need help. We're calling for um, people to, to give us ideas who want to join the working group, um, people with facilitation advice, and all of these kind of things to figure out how we can really 
continue the work that's happening in events like this, where we're weaving together more and more between all of the projects that each of these individual groups are doing. Um, and to have this extra foot in, in how to balance both the, the culture and community that, that we want to have that fosters and really supports healthy forests, to learn from the people that tended these forests for thousands and tens of thousands of years that the reason why we still have the abundance that's left after all that's been done um, to these forests, right, is a real testament to, to what can happen when, when humans have a deep relationship and work in connection with the forest, not just for the survival and health of the forest, but for their own communities as well. Um. Yeah, so please come and talk to us. Um, you know, there's many ways that we could see people getting involved in this, in this project, and um, we would just, yeah, love to keep the conversation going. You know, forestreciprocity.org, we'll be trying to keep some news up there and, um, and, and we're, yeah, we're really honored to be able to, to carry this small piece a little bit more forward in conjunction with everybody else. So thank y'all. Mm -hmm. oh.